How's everyone doing? Good? Can everybody hear me? Okay, good. Um, so, a little bit about myself. First of all, I want to thank everyone for coming today. Hopefully I can, my goal when you guys walk out of here today is one, to have a lot of fun, and two, hopefully walk away for something using socially you can implement, you know, in your business, you know, starting hopefully today or tomorrow or, you know, down the road. Um, and I'm not a big slide guy, so it's just kind of very uncorporate America, but I have one, uh, a little bit about me. So I do work at Dell, um, I'm a social media project manager. I've been in social media for Dell for the last four years. If you guys are familiar or not, maybe not, um, Dell and what I specifically do, there's tools out there that it's kind of big brotherish, but I really like it. Um, where anytime you say something in social, that can be aggregated. So we use it as kind of a primary research method to understand customer complaints, customer feedback, or product ideation, and stuff like that. Um, so today in the presentation, I definitely want to keep things light and entertaining. And I, hopefully some of you guys know me, I'm a little rough around the edges, and I do drop the occasional F-bomb, so if I do, I apologize um, in advance. And if you don't like it, you can just get the, you know, out of here. Um, just kidding. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. So this is where the presentation really ends, and I actually get into driving, because I want to make this as interactive and actually get in the weeds with social with you guys as much as I can. So first quick question I have is when I say social media, how many of that, how many people think, oh, that's a Twitter and a Facebook page? When do you think social media? I mean, don't be scared. Okay, majority of people. Um, so yeah, I mean, that, that is a, a big part of social media. Um, and that, that's what everyone thinks. It's like, hey, I'm gonna go start a Twitter account, I'm gonna go start a Facebook account, Google Plus, Instagram, whatever. And the hard part about it is, is that how much time that takes. Um, and there's a lot of other ways to use social media, you know, other than, you know, starting an account that I want to start with. Because starting, you know, starting social properties and management, I mean, honestly, it takes time. I mean, it takes time to manage an account. It takes time to create the content. So I wanted to kind of show a few ways to use social. First, I'm definitely going to get into that. But I want to show you a few quick things uh, that can definitely be leveraged. And the funny thing is I'm going to keep my Twitter account open the entire time. So if you want to tweet me, make fun of me, tell me that I sound like an idiot, you go right ahead. It won't hurt my feelings at all. Um, so first thing is, I kind of want to get into, is think about using social media as a way to mine intelligence around, you know, your shop um, in terms of, you know, what are people saying about it? You know, what are people saying about your competitors or what are people kind of saying about the industry in general? So might be kind of simple, but how many people have heard of Google Alerts? Most people? Okay, perfect. Um, so within the, the actual tool that I have, um, that we use at Dell, it, it's a little more sophisticated, but Google Alerts is an absolute great way for you to put in the name of your shop. And then anytime on the, on the web, where it, whether it be a website, forum, blog, you know, any site, review site, um, a mention of your, your shop comes up, it'll bring it to you kind of in an email format. So I have a few actually set up here. So I'll, I'll actually just go ahead and show you how to set these up really quick. Um, is there anyone has a name of a shop? You can just throw out real quick. I heard something Indian. I, what? Wooden Indian. Wooden Indian. All right, that's actually a really good one. And I'm gonna tell you why. I can't spell, by the way. Um, is that the interesting part about social, if you have a, a really straightforward shop name, like I just was visiting a client, is anybody from Watch City Cigars in Framingham, Massachusetts here? Because I just went to your shop about a month ago. Um, something straightforward like that is very easy to capture because what else is named Watch City Cigar? But you look here, Wooden Indian. I mean, we've got Wooden Indian Burial Ground. We've got a lot of other things that is coming in which when you set this alert, you're gonna get a bunch of stuff that may or may not be related to you. And, that, and that's where we can actually come in here and filter for a couple of things. One um, would be how often do you wanna get your alerts? Um, I would always say once a day is a kind of a good way to do it. And then only kind of the best results are all results. That's do you want only the best things that Google's gonna send you are all results. And then deliver to your email address. I'm gonna go ahead and create this and then show you something a little bit here in just a second. So go ahead and create the alert. So what's going to happen is now every time that wooden Indian is used, it's going to send me an email. Now, the question I have is that once you actually get that email, let's say it's good or bad or positive or not, what do you do with it? Okay, well, do you like 
buttons. Jump up and down, like scream, pound your fist, like what do you do? Like exactly. Do you like respond to it? Do you just say, oh, that's really interesting? Or what, I mean, what would you do? <clears throat> Nothing, okay. Uh, so that's what we're gonna kind of focus on in the next part. And, and I truly believe that social media, the way things are going, you know, with social and everything, it's a way to connect with people that we've never been able to before. And it's really a way to kind of extend the way and touch points that you can actually communicate with your customers, but actually capture ones that you've never even really thought about before. And how you can respond, and we'll kind of get into, you know, if somebody says something negative or positive, how we can get into that. But that's something that we're going to save for later. So within that Google Alert, you're going to get uh, an email that will actually come in. You'll be able to click right on it. You'll be able to take you to the link where you can actually read all the feedback that occurs. So within it, I'm just going to show you really quick on Wooden Indium. You can actually use. Oh, let me go back to edit my alert. You can actually use some Boolean operators. Oh, let me go here one second. Oh, come on, don't do this to me now. <laughs> so you can actually use some Boolean operators like not and then put in like, for example, burial ground or whatever it may be, which will actually help you clean up a lot of the results that come in. And it, it's kind of an art, not a science. You have to kind of play around with it to get what you want. But it's a good way to mine everything kind of outside of Twitter and Facebook in a free format to capture everything that's said about your business. The next thing with this is, and I'll kind of take this in order here, is that also with Google Alerts, is that you can set it up for really about anything. For example, I've got one set up has anyone, everyone smoked the CYB? How's it going? Pretty great cigar. I, I set one up, and we'll talk about why I set this up here in a minute. But you can actually set this up not just about your business, but if you have a shop in the same town, or your competitor shop, set it up. See what people are saying about them. You know, set it up for you know a certain cigar that you're interested in potentially carrying or maybe not wanting to carry anymore um, to kind of get feedback around what people are saying about that cigar. So. Moving in, so that's kind of how do you capture things about your business, competitors, industry topics, um, non-social. Next thing, wow, 10 already. Getting a lot of good followers. Oh. Hey, David, how are you? Holy crap, okay. Um, so moving on, and next thing is how many people are familiar with Hootsuite? Hopefully everyone, right? How many people know that you can do some basic listening in Hootsuite? A few people? Okay, good. So let me kind of show you guys how to do that. So Google Alerts, we've already talked about, um, is really, really good for everything kind of other than Twitter and Facebook, where uh, Hootsuite, you can actually capture everything else. So a couple of good things um, to do here, you can do follow the exact same process, you know, whether it's listening to about your business, it's listening to, you know, about a competitor store, about a cigar that you're interested into, or a new cigar release, whatever it may be. Um, and that's another way that you can kind of listen. So hold on a second here. Okay. So I want to show a kind of couple of examples here. Um, is anybody from Smoke In here? No. Okay. Cool. Well, I'm using you as an example. You're not here, so you can't be mad at me about it. Um, so what you do here when you want to kind of set up a keyword alert is click into, and by the way, Hootsuite's a completely free tool. So it doesn't cost any money. All Everything I'm showing you today is free. If you guys want to talk about paid tools, we can course do it, but there's a lot of free stuff out there you can definitely use. So you click on add stream, and then come in here to search. So here it would be where you put the name of your shop, the cigar that you're interested in, and what will happen is when you click add stream, it will actually come in right here where you can kind of filter every single thing. So for example, can't wait to try the CYB, okay, really good, can't wait to try it, Jose is really active on Twitter if you didn't know. Um, I'm really looking forward to the KFC. Uh, PS. Uh, okay, so I'm smoking the CYB in bed. That's a little bit too much information, but okay. Um, okay, so that, that's kind of the point there. So um, those two can really capture a lot where you can then, the question that I'd pose is what do you do with that information? It can really help you set yourself up. Regardless of whether you engage or not, engagement or response is not a requirement. A lot of people think it is. I mean, it, it is very important if you want to take that step. But regardless, still listening and capturing all of that is important because let's just pretend, for example, someone has a bad experience with an, a, a tobacconist at the shop or say they didn't have a good experience with a certain kind of cigar. Even though you might not respond, 
still getting that information can help you, you know, make changes in your business and actually change the way you're doing things. Um, so any, any questions about that so far? Oh man, I probably shouldn't open up the questions yet. Yes, you. No, it is not. So, and, okay, that's a great question. So, if you just type in the store name, not case sensitive, but the ors are. So, or or and need to be capitalized. So, great question. I saw someone back there. Yes, blue shirt. How do you spell it? How do you spell what? Oh, right here. H, it's like, ooh, like an owl. H O O T S U I T. Right here. And by the way, we were actually recording this video, which I'm kind of scared about because my face will be out there forever. Uh, and we'll be posting that and we'll make sure we'll be able to get the links so you guys ever want to watch it again or dive back into it. We totally can. Um, okay, perfect. Kind of the next thing is how many people know what Foursquare is? Wow, okay, hold on. How many people, this is crazy to me. Like when I say Twitter, Facebook, you know, people, but Foursquare, all right. So how many people knew, know that Foursquare, you can actually register and know that, well, I mean, you can register for an account, of course, but you can actually sign up with Hootsuite and say, okay, this cigar shop is actually mine. How many people knew that? A lot less hands. Okay, good. Um, so let me go ahead and put this in. Okay, I'll show you guys really quick. So go to business.foursquare.com, um, and what it allows you to do, so people who don't know what Foursquare is, um, it's an application, typically it sets on your mobile phone, it allows you to check in at different places. And it really runs off Google Maps, so regardless of whether you've said that you've signed up or not, um, people can still check in at your store. I'll be honest, a lot of times when people actually check in, a tweet will come up and will say something like, I'm at smoking cigars, and then a little link to it. About 80% of the time, that's all people are gonna do, is they're just gonna check in, call it good, and that's it. About 20% of the time, people are actually gonna make a comment like, oh, I just picked up this, or hey, cigar shop, you did a really bad job on this. So the cool thing about this is once you actually come in here, and since I don't have a business, I can't register, uh, or I don't have a cigar shop, but you can actually click in here, learn more, actually get into their business tools, so that way you can actually get emailed every time someone checks in, you have a little bit of analytics on who the people are. Uh, and it's another way to track what people are saying about your business. Next two, along kind of the same lines here, is I'm sure everyone's heard of Yelp and TripAdvisor, right? Do you know that you can actually write a review about a cigar shop on Yelp or TripAdvisor? Because I do, I do when I go out. Um, so I won't, I won't go to those since you guys are pretty familiar, but the same exact thing. So with, with Foursquare, you can go in and register and say that I own this place. And the really, really cool thing about it is that you can, if somebody does leave a negative review, then you can respond and actually take care of that customer based on the feedback that they've said. So, any questions up until that point? No? Okay. Um, so, going on here. So, really, you know, what you do with the feedback when you do this kind of basic listening is, you know, do you respond to it? Do you use it? to just say, oh man, I've just learned this. So I kind of want to talk to a few kind of interesting use cases uh, that I want to give you that I think you guys can definitely um, implement coming out of IPCPR this year. You know, the first one is, we're all at the trade show, right? Every manufacturer is launching new cigars, you know, new lines, uh, extensions of their current lines. Obviously they want to sell cigars, and they're new. So you're going to smoke them, and you might like them, you might not. But, you know, I, I firmly believe that there's, you know, power in the consensus. You know, do multiple people like them or not? I think social is a really interesting way to find out people's opinions. So, you know, let's pretend, you know, how do you glean the buzz around the cigars that are released at the trade show? Do people like them? Do they not? Um, and how do you go about doing that? So the first question is, I'm going to call out a few, you know, cigar sites and stuff that are here. But how many people typically look at any sort of cigar review forum blog to actually see what people are saying about cigars? Probably, eh, by 
So I'm going to call out a couple of ones that are really, really, really good, uh, at least in my opinion. Um, has anybody heard of Half Wheel? Hopefully. Okay. So I, what I would do is if I own a shop, halfwheel.com. So yeah, right here. Yeah, halfwheel.com. Um, what I would do is that during, you know, after the show, people are going to review the cigars. Um, and I would go and see, are they going to review the cigar? You know, do they like it? What's their opinion? And just because someone, say someone at Half Wheel likes it, um, and someone at another cigar site, like, like for example, Stow Your View doesn't, there's a lot of different places where you can kind of get your information from. So I would definitely look around, and you can also do that with the Google Alerts. You know, set up a Google Alert and look in Twitter and Hootsuite and actually look for, you know, the name of the cigar and really get an understanding of whether people like it or they don't. So, I mean, I think that's a very interesting way to get information because um, everyone, everyone you know, out in social right is smoking cigars. They're putting out their opinion, and granted, it might just be their opinion, but what you can glean from that is that, you know, do they like it? So I think that's a pretty interesting use case, and I'd love to hear if someone actually, you know, takes any of my feedback or anything from here. If they do, I'd love to hear about what you did. I'd love to hear that story. Next thing that I want to talk about is, you know, along the lines of what cigars you need to carry or what products should you carry. Has anyone heard of the Half Wheel Consensus? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay. And I can't spell for any of you that doesn't know me, so just bear with me. I'm up. The internet. Okay, while that loads. Um, here we go. So, Half Moon's the site we just talked about. It's a review and news site for cigars. And what they do every year, um, Charlie, who you know, started the site, is anybody familiar with like research? Anybody come from like a marketing or research or primary research background? Okay. So what they do here, and I think I find it extremely interesting. I wish I would have thought the idea myself personally. But there's a lot of sites out there on the internet that review the top top cigars of the year. You know, what are my top ten? What do I like? What do I not? Well, what what Charlie does is he takes allows people to submit in you know their top ten list, and he kind of aggregates that and correlates that together, and then kind of creates a consensus list across all of these sites and all of these blogs and all of these forums. So really what you're getting is not one person's opinion, you're getting 50 people's opinion who have kind of smoked the cigar to see where it ranks. And it's interesting definitely on the way that they do it. Um, and they're very transparent in terms of the process, right? Like, you know, you have to have published at least one review, so you can kind of get into the details there. But they break it down in terms of, you know, what is kind of the brand of the year, you know, the new brand of the year, factory of the year, you know, country of the year, you know, consensus cigar of the year, um, and all of that. So I think it's very, very, very interesting. Um, and the reason why I called the CYB out is, you know, it appeared on 25 of the 53 lists. So that means obviously a lot of people liked it. And I think it's a very interesting way of, with how much the cigar industry, new cigars are coming out, things, you know, you know, just trying to learn what to carry and what kind of your customers are going to like. I think it's a very interesting way of kind of, instead of having to go ask, you know, everyone in your shop and getting their opinions, it's kind of already done for you. So any any questions on that up until this point? Blue shirt. So you have to kind of manage both those personas. And that's why 
you know, really to, if you try to find time, you'll never have time, but if you make time, you'll find the time. You know what I mean by that? So what I would do is I would only chew off or, you know, do or, you know, try what you think you can handle, right? Like if you're like, for example, you're like, I don't have a bunch of time, I have 10 minutes a day, then honestly what I would do is let me start very simple, let me just look at my shop first. Once I've kind of mastered that, let me move on to looking at maybe a few cigars I want to carry. And, and that's the thing I've really noticed with, you know, the social media service that we sell for clients is that a lot of them try to take on too much too quick. And then it's like, oh my God, I got all these emails and freaking tweets, this is just bullshit, it takes so long. And if you do it in a way where you start slow and work your way up, you get more refined, you can automate a lot quicker and it just seems a lot easier overall. So that's what I would say. Okay. I mean, honestly, I have like a couple of email addresses on my corporate email and my personal email, and I find just managing two is kind of a pain in the ass, to be honest. Like, I would probably recommend using it to whichever email you check the most, because obviously you want to get this information. Um, and I would say, if it comes to a point, kind of the previous question, if you're getting too much or there's too much coming in, pair back on the amount that you're getting, shrink that down versus creating another email. Because I, I mean, just with me personally, I don't know about you, if I create another email, I would never check it. <sighs> Any other questions? White shirt. Just kind of touch on these topics. At what point do you recommend that a shop owner designate somebody to do this? Well, you know, um, that's kind of what, what the question is. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. I don't get an extra five hours of my day doing Yeah, unfortunately. Um, so I, the question is, is that, you know, should you have someone that works for you or someone kind of handle the social aspect? And, you know, it, I think it comes down to your level of comfort you know, the level of comfort. Something like this where you're doing kind of the listening and getting that information, I think that totally can be done by someone that kind of works for you or someone that works at your shop easily. But when it comes to if you have, you know, a Twitter account, a Facebook account that is Watch City Cigar, how comfortable are you with letting someone, it's not, I'm not trying to impugn, like they might be a good employee, but they might not be working there. I mean, do you trust your brand and your name and your reputation to someone else? I mean, it, it, I'm just playing devil's advocate. You know, I think that if you do do that, I think I think it can be done. I know a lot of companies that we work with that you know let third parties and all this manage it. You know, and I think the biggest thing is you just have to have a very tight control over it because what is being sent out and what is going out is representing you and your company, your brand. So you just have to make sure that they're on point with that. But I don't I don't really see a problem with it. I'll give you one good tip: is that if you do set up the account, make sure you always always write down the name and the password. And you have that. Because if that employee quits or gets pissed off or whatever, you can't get back into your account. So who knows what could happen. So I would always make sure you keep those passwords guarded. Blue shirt. Yeah, yeah, well, probably another good step one is have a strategy around and maybe you share something through the transportation on what you've done for others. Yep. Only if you ask nice. That's part of the approach, right? You might want to exactly. listen, you might want to engage, you might want to amplify. Those kind of things you need to determine, and that will help dictate Exactly. Okay. Yeah, no, and I was going to, I'm definitely going to get into that. So that seems where the questions are kind of gravitating to. I mean, I can honestly sit here and talk for eight hours, so I won't bore you with that. But let, let's just get into kind of the, the social account management part of it and the strategy part of it. Is first question is how many people have a brand, like a, for your shop, a Twitter account? What about a Facebook account? What about something else beyond that, like Google Plus, Instagram, whatever? Now, the question is, how many of you think you actually manage those accounts properly or dedicate enough time to it? Okay, so I've got like five people. Okay, so first thing is, and with your accounts, you have to have, like, like the guy back there said, you definitely have to have a strategy. And I think the, the linchpin of social is, for, is to connect with people, right? And really how you do that is not push marketing, not talking about myself, but it's really starting a relationship through kind of content, right? Um, and really is, and I'll give you a really interesting example. 
um, who's at Roma Craft Tobacco, um, Skip Martin. Um, I actually met him off of Twitter, and it comes to find out that we actually, at one time, worked in the same company and lived about six miles apart. I had no idea, right? And, and, and met off social, and, that, and that's from kind of the relationship aspect. So, you know, I think it's interesting when people say, what's the ROI of social, or, you know, this or that and the other. And really, for, for a shop, I think the ROI is, yes, you're going to potentially maybe sell a little bit of product, but really it's going to be the relationships that will then lead to those sales or those introductions versus, I am going to make a quick sale, so on and so forth. Um, so we kind of talked about the linchpin of the content, and this is a really, really good rule, and, and I personally kind of stick by this, and it's something that I gleaned from a couple social experts in the industry, is that this is the 80-20 rule. I know you guys have heard the 80-20 rule, there's 80-20 rules for everything. But when you're actually publishing content, 80%, this is gonna sound really, probably really strange, 80% shouldn't be about cigars. It should be about you. Because if you really think about it, in social, they're not, yes, they're connecting with your shop, but they're connecting with an individual. And, that, and that's who they wanna to talk to. The, the, the actual shop itself is not through bricks, like with brick fingers, like tweeting you back, right? It's an actual, it's actual human, and that's who they wanna connect with. So for example, with Dell, with my Twitter account, uh, and I don't know if you guys have seen this, if you guys can see my smiling face here. Um, yeah, look, look at that good looking guy right there. Um, so with my account, 20% or one, oh, or one out of five things that I do is about Dell. And that can be a quick white paper, that can be whatever, but most of it's about my Labradoodle, my dog, uh, I guess my Labradoodle is my dog, or cigars, or you know where I'm going on vacation, or when I go to India for work, or whatever, right? Um, so that, that's how it really goes. So, you know, that's what you want to do because really people want to connect with you. So that is the strategy. The strategy is that you want to build kind of a social persona of yourself in social and doing that by getting, letting people to get to know you kind of through the 80-20 rule. And I'm going to show you guys how I do this and how I manage my Twitter account. It's going to sound crazy. In like 15 minutes a day and how I get a lot of really good content for that. Uh, but I want to stop and open up questions on that 80-20 rule because I know it seems kind of counterintuitive. Anybody has any questions on that? Wow, I'm just that good. Okay, good. Um, all right, moving on. So, a couple of social faux pas uh, that, you know, I, I just kind of drive me crazy. Um, is one, and a couple of things, is that one is that when you go out and you're first starting, and I'll, and I'll tell you this, so where do you think the majority, I'll just ask the audience, where do you think the majority of conversation across, in Twitter or Facebook or blogs or forums or YouTube or Pinterest, where do you think the majority of cigar-related conversations occur? On what platform? Does anybody have any guesses or ideas? Twitter? Instagram? Facebook? Okay, sorry. Forums? Okay, so I've heard kind of all of it. Um, so actually, believe it or not, the answer is Twitter. And, and I think there's a really, and I think there's a, a simple reason why. Um, is that really Facebook and those other communities are kind of a one-to-one a -one like type thing where you're connecting with people you kind of already know versus Twitter, you can go out and follow, I don't, mean, I don't know how you do this, but you can go out and follow like Paris Hilton and go talk to her, where in Facebook or blog form, that's a little bit more difficult. Yes? Want to meet and 
I'm doing a relationship to do that. So that's a really good point. Is there anything else on the... So, okay, so that's a really good question. And I'm kind of internally conflicted about that question for one reason, is that yes, there are apps, for example, you can use, I mean, Hootsuite works pretty good, uh, that we kind of showed you earlier, Suite Deck will do that. The reason that I don't do that, and why I think it's somewhat dangerous to do that, is if you think about it, people who are gonna be following you on Twitter, there's a probably a pretty good chance they're going to be following you on Instagram. There's probably a pretty good chance they're going to be following you on Facebook. And if you're publishing the exact same thing, what is the incentive for them to then follow you in all of those mediums? If they're getting the same exact content over and over. Now, yes, from a marketing standpoint, you know, you get three kind of touch points with the same message. I get that. But for me, I, I don't like going into Facebook and seeing, you know, somebody said X and seeing the same damn thing again in, you know, Twitter or whatever. So that's why I, I advocate, and, th and this is the part where it takes the time and the management, is that, yes, there could be some like, crossover and stuff, but you know, I think that it's better to really split it up and have kind of different content. And why I would advocate if you are struggling getting content on a bunch of accounts, focus on just one. Start with just a Twitter account, start with just a Facebook account. Don't go crazy and open you know, every single account known to man because nothing looks worse when you have an account and it's never ever been serviced ever or nobody ever talks on it because obviously the customer seeks you out in Facebook is like, oh man, I want to talk to Watch City Cigar and they've never been active, it's kind of a turn off, right? It'd be the same thing if you went to a place of business and they say they're open and you think they might be, but then they're vacated, right? You're gonna be pissed. It's kind of the same principle. Sorry for the roundabout answer. That was a really good question. Anything else? No, okay, good. So let's go into a couple of faux pas, which I just want to get off the table here, is that in Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, you can buy followers. You guys know what I'm talking about? I will show you. Uh, and this is, this is just the devil. I don't, I, I would never do this. Should I buy Twitter followers? No, the answer is hell no. Um, okay, here we go. So what Twitter followers are, what it does is that, for example, on my account, right? And another thing, another side point, but is do not let yourself be defined by how many followers that you have. Frankly, it does not matter. It does not. What matters is the connection and relationship that you have with those people. Just because you have 100,000 followers, if you bought, for example, let's talk about this buying thing. So basically all you're doing here is buying followers that are fake. They're like little robots. They don't serve a purpose other than they make this number seem a lot bigger. But if you're trying to connect, you're trying to establish a relationship, what does that really do for you? And trust me, believe it or not, there are tools out there that can tell if you know which tools, and I won't tell you which tools, I don't want you to go look into your friend's Twitter account or anything like that. But there are tools out there that will tell you if you have fake followers, and I occasionally like to do it just because it's kind of fun to see who's doing it. But that'll be a side conversation. Um, so don't definitely go by followers. Um, next thing is that I've seen people do is have you ever seen where you're you know you're following somewhere, you're looking at someone, and their follower, you know, their following number is like 1,700, but they only have 300 followers? How many people have kind of seen that very much of a mismatch in terms of followers to following? Okay, so this is more of an advanced thing, and this is just me, because maybe I'm a Twitter snob, I don't know. Um, but I always look at, it's something I look at, and when you go out and follow a bunch of people, that's great, right? When you first start, start your account, but that high of number, it almost looks like, to me, and uh, granted, my background in listening, and it's a little bit different conversation, but it, it almost seems kind of spamish, right? Like, I would rather see you go out and target certain people like, I'll, for example, if you're a retail shop, let me tell you some people you should follow. First of all, you should always follow the cigars that you carry, right? The manufacturers that you carry. You should always get your, the reps that service your store. You should always follow them, right? Those are people that are going to follow you back and then you can easily have a conversation with them. 
And then I would work, start working to follow your actual, your customers. So you can connect with them in a more real-time basis. Um, I keep my notes going here. And, okay. And then before we get into the actual kind of managing of the account, um, the one thing I wanted to talk about is that, and I always find this a very interesting dynamic um, in, for, you know, brick and mortar shops, is that, you know, when you have customers come in the door, right, like they're there. You can talk to them, you can interact with them, you can have a conversation. But what, what happens once they leave, right? I mean, how, how do you continually have conversations, I mean, unless you put ads out on TV, which you probably don't do. Can you even advertise my company? No, you can't, can you? I didn't think so. Um, you know, how, how do you continue to communicate with them? And one of the biggest things that I've seen, and I'm, this is a very big generalization right now, but one thing that I've seen is that, for example, Fred Ruby down there, corner, Ezra Zion, two good examples of on their cigars, they put the Twitter account on their cigar band. So when a customer is actually smoking it, it's pretty easy, like, oh man, this is a Twitter account. I can very easily go and tweet this manufacturer, and if I have a problem or have a question, I can answer it. So my point is, is that most, most, most retail shops, you guys put on either a barcode or something to be able to, you know, scan or, you know, to know how much of a product. Why not put your, your, your shop Twitter handle on that cello? So when somebody opens it up, they have it right there. And if they have a question or concern or they have a great freaking experience, boom, you can do it. So I, I don't know why, you know, I mean, that's a free nugget. Um, I, I thought that was kind of interesting too. Also on your website, you know, everywhere you should put your, your Twitter account or your Facebook or your accounts, you know, on your website, you should put on your business cards. Also, you know, another thing is that if you give out any sort of, you know, somebody comes and buys five or six single cigars, um, and you put them in a little baggie, put your Twitter account, put your social accounts on those bags, because the, the key would be is that once you, and also, there is nothing, let me just be straight, there is nothing wrong when you're checking someone out to say, hey, what's your Twitter account? Or hey, what, you know, who are you on Twitter? There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And that most people will tell you, and it's a very, very, very easy way to find out who those people are, to continually to have a conversation with them, even when they're not in the shop. And so that you're still, you know, top of mind. Because this is a way to kind of keep that connection going. So now I know I've rambled for probably like 30 minutes at this point. Um, I'm gonna get into managing accounts. I wanna stop and actually light my cigar because I haven't smoked nearly enough. Um, and take any questions you guys have before I switch gears. Yes? Yep. Correct. So, it, and it's a good point. So in, in Facebook, it is a little bit more complex and that's why I advocate um, starting in Twitter because it's much, much easier. But within Facebook in general, that is one where you have to, like I said, put your information on your website, tell customers your information, so they will actually proactively go out and kind of find you. And the reason that I don't, I mean, okay, I'll be honest. Yeah, I got Facebook back in 2004 or three, so when I was in college. So I've been on Facebook for quite a long time. And one thing about Facebook, that I've never liked, and hopefully Mark Zuckerberg doesn't walk in here like punching in the face or something, but one thing I've never liked about it is that on Facebook, how many people would find it creepy if some random company just started following you on Facebook? For no reason, you've never done business with them or anything, but would you say the same thing on Twitter? Less people, right? And, and that's just the type of system it is. Like, I would get probably another generalization, but most people that you probably, as individuals, follow on Facebook is going to be families, friends, college buddies, you know, acquaintances. And we're on Twitter, might be people you've never met. And I like the ability in a platform um, to be able to connect with as much or as many broad people as I can versus focusing in where you can get kind of best of both worlds. Does that help? I'm sorry if I just. Oh, good, okay. Um, you back there in the pink shirt. Well, that's a rule that Twitter put in to stop the thing that I said about going gangbusters. So if I just went out, they, and that's what they do, right? For example, is that once you, if you just start your account and you start following, you get up to 2,000 following, and they shut, they say no more following. Because what they want to do is keep accounts 
from just going out and following at thousands of people and just honestly spreading a bunch of BS around. And so they try to keep these ratios in line. Um, and so what I'll do is I'm going to talk about here a tool in just a minute on how you can clean up some of those followers. So I'll, I'll come back to your question in just a second. I know I saw someone over here. Difficulty in like what way, like people like giving you crap or like. Yeah. Well, I mean. Policy violation. Yeah. I mean, honestly, that's just Facebook. So 
So here is a really good thing. Is that you? Yeah! Woo! Making connections, baby. All right. So I just got really loud right there. Um, so once someone follows you, it's kind of like someone walks into your shop. Right? You walk, someone walks into your shop, what's the first thing you're going to say? Exactly. Social is no different. And this can be something very easy um, that you can do. And I actually, I have one other PowerPoint slide here that I want to show. It's my second one because I, I, who hates PowerPoint? I freaking hate it. Um, who, is anybody from Tobacco Tin here? Really? Yay! Okay. So I used an example from you. Um, so for example, I saw some interesting content. I followed their account. And they're from El Paso, I'm from Austin, so if you've ever been in Texas, it takes like eight hours to get out of Texas from wherever you're at. Like, it's a big state, like I, El Paso's really far. But thanks for the follow, stop by forever in El Paso. Thanks, I sure will. We look forward to it, make sure to mention you follow us on Twitter if you make it in. Oh, I want to give you a virtual hug, because that was just, it's just good. It's warm, it's inviting, and you, you bet you sweet ass. If I ever go to El Paso, which, yeah, it's debatable. But if I do, where do you think I'm going to stop? Right? I'm going to stop there. And, and that's the same exact principle that you guys should follow. And it doesn't have to be, uh, don't say it, sure. Um, it doesn't have to be complicated. It can be as simple as, did right there that you noticed? Exactly. You know, I can't talk enough about always leaving an open question. If I just said, thanks for following, do you think they're going to say, hey, I'm really glad I followed you? I don't know. They're going to say, you know, if you leave it an open question, or, hey, what are you smoking? Here's a few examples. Hey, come by and check us out. You know, what are you smoking today? Or what great cigars have you smoked lately? Or hey, uh, whatever maybe it can be. Honestly, it can be anything. Or, you know, how is it to run a cigar shop? Do you like it? Or whatever. I mean, just kind of tailor it to them. Um, you'd be surprised at that point how many people. Because that, that little interaction is something that people will remember. Yes? Do you think an auto-reply is too much of a hammer? Oh! Oh! No. Don't do that. I mean, the reason I'm saying this is that I've seen a lot of implosions in, like, big Fortune 500 companies where they've done like an auto reply, and a lot. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't like it. I would much rather it be something. I mean, thanks for the follow, yeah. But if you try to get too complicated with it, it might not resonate. And I've seen examples of that happening. But I would much rather you say that when it comes down to a time thing, I'd rather you say, okay, ten people follow me instead of doing ten auto replies. I'd rather you do actually do five custom ones to a person. Which will bring a lot more value. At least mine. Any other questions? We used to go out whenever we're doing a cigar event. Okay. And we immediately tweet out whatever that event is, and we usually start with something wow, we're enjoying a great whatever cigar, see us at the shop, and so such and such time. We get a great response, and it brings in additional business. We sold out an entire, we did a Friday afternoon, we're smoking X, we sold out everything. It's true, um, but the key to it is, is that, um, well, first of all, yeah, I'm going to answer your question. So, yeah, I mean, you're exactly right. People are going to respond, but you already have an engaged base of followers, right? And, and that, that's the key, is that if you're just starting your account, I mean, you kind of kind of put in some sweat equity, like building up and talking to people, getting that relationship going, because, yeah, I mean, it's just got to be done. And who knows the cigar events? Wow, I'm surprised more people don't know. So, cigar events... Great website um, is kind of the one-stop shop for cigar events, and they aggregate all of these cigar events. If you don't, I would definitely go to cigarevents.com. Would you like to add your event, or feel free to contact us here and actually contact them, and you can post all of your events there. So I travel a lot for work, um, and anytime I go, I always go here, and people go here. Anywhere out in social, I truly believe that you can get information like your events or information about your shop, even if it's just static, 
is, is huge. I mean, the more places you are, the more likely people are going to see kind of this type of information. So if you don't do this, I would definitely do this. Do you do this? Yes. I knew I liked you. This is good. Um, okay, so real quick, that was the, the good point about the, um, the tweet and the following. So, you know, obviously I would go through and every time you get, and I like to manage things directly from Twitter um, for one reason, um, and let me tell you why, is that when it comes down to Twitter, what time, what time is this in? Is it two? Do we still have time? Two o'clock. Two o'clock. Okay, yeah, we got time. Um, so one of probably my absolute favorite social media app is called Buffer App. Has anyone heard of this? Oh, write this down. B-U-F-F-E-R, A-P-P, is the most genius app. And there's a lot of reasons that I love it. One, it's free because it doesn't like free stuff. And two, is it allows you in a non kind of auto response way, set down for 15 minutes or 10 minutes a day, schedule out really good content for your account, and it's almost a set in and forget it, where then during the day when you get a mention or reply, all you have to do is, and I would definitely put Twitter and your other social accounts on your mobile device, it's much easier to manage, where you can just respond. And what it lets you do is do a couple of cool things. It lets you schedule out um, content. So I, I mean, I tweet a lot, right? So you can schedule up to five posts a day or how much ever you want. But let's, the goal I would say to start off with would be five things a day because, you know, 80, 20 is much easier with, you know, a round number like five is four about you. And then, you know, one about something else. So the really cool thing about it is it allows you to, hey, thanks for the follow, man crush. All right, let's just retweet that one. Um, is that Buffer app will let you, it integrates into Twitter right here. And here's my favorite thing to do in Twitter, is that people just go, you know, frankly, kind of ape shit, and just retweet, retweet, retweet. Add something to your retweet. I mean, yes, retweets are great, that's fine, whatever. But when you add a little bit of commentary on it, it's much like, thank you for following versus thanks for following what cigar are you smoking? And here's a very easy way to do it in Buffer app. You click that little buffer, bam, it comes up, you hit, okay? So you change to quote, and now I can add commentary into that tweet. So for example, what should I put here? Hey Logan, thanks for the phone, man crush. You know it, brother. Or whatever you want to put, I don't know, okay, that was kind of creepy. Um, <laughs> allows you to add something extra into the content. So at that point, you can share it now, which posts right away, or you can buffer it, which I'm gonna buffer it just to show you what it looks like. And then in your buffer app right here, go back to this whole thing. So that always gonna come out at four o'clock, which, so I'm from Austin, so that's central time. So it'll come out in 37 minutes. Um, at that point, that's gonna come through. So, and I would do this, um, the kind of content, thanks for presenting, Okay. Uh, there's my channel. All right, let me get my head on the right thing here. I just lost my train of thought. Okay, so what, what do we want to schedule out a day? Well, let me ask you, what type of content do you think um, that is about you that people would find interesting? I mean, what do you think is acceptable? Okay, man, that might have been a really stupid question to ask because everyone's going to be different. Um, let me rephrase it. Is that the content that you can be about yourself is something that reflects you. It could be your dog. It could be your family. It could be, and it, it can be kind of cigar related. You know, what if it was a website that you really liked? But you want to stay away. It could be a picture of a cigar. That's totally cool too. But it, it, you, don't, we want, you don't want it to be that, hey, everybody, I'm carrying the Rocky Patel, whatever, and come check it out. No, you want to save that for that one tweet, right? And that can be about an event or a new cigar that you're carrying or a new feature at your lounge or whatever. So what I'll typically do um, in the morning, now granted, my feed's a little bit crazy, but I really enjoy it. Oh, thank you, nice job. Okay, let's go ahead and buffer that. Okay. Thanks, man. And that's the one thing you have to worry about social, is a, I know, I know cigar sticks. Always be careful saying thanks, man, or thanks, brother, because sometimes it might be a woman. So it's just one thing to watch out for. I've made that mistake before. Thanks, man. I know I am the best. Just kidding. 
Smiley face. Yeah, I can, I can do a smiley face, all right. Smiley face. <laughs> and emotion cons and social are great. Uh, okay, so let me, I'll pretend that I'm kind of scheduling out content. So what I would do, it's like six in the morning, I've been on conference calls already, kind of groggy. I come over here to my Twitter timeline, and I'm like, hmm, what is interesting here? Hmm, all right, Jerry Cruz. That's a nice little picture. Hmm, okay, interesting. So, here's something I would do, is I would go ahead and buffer. Quote tweet, I like quote tweets a lot if you haven't noticed. And how was it? Question mark. And here's a really interesting thing that you can do um, with it is, see I'm over my tweet limit there. So what do you think something that I would remove out of this um, that would make the tweet shorter, that wouldn't alter the message of the tweet? Well, I'm sorry? Huh? Spaces. Spaces, yeah. Well, first of all, Jerry, I, if you're in here, I'm really sorry because I'm about to tell you that you're stupid. But um, the, the Twitter account for IPCPR is the IPCPR, and then he has 2013, but he already has the hashtag here. So I would just take this buddy right on out of here. Hit buffer, bam. That's one piece of content. Let's go through and see what else we got. Hey, it looks like NBC is Barry. Okay. Oh, there's Barry Stein. How you doing, Barry? It looks like they're not in the seminar today, so they really missed out. Um, just kidding. Let me keep going here. I'll try not to try to pull the recipes of honey pictures and have neighbors go over and check it. There's a good one. I'm doing this because I'm just looking for good stuff. You don't have to just pick, you know, random stuff. It can be something that you you want to know. Like, honestly, I'm kind of a big barbecue guy. They call me smoking lunch because I smoke cigars and I barbecue. And I'm, I guess I don't like smoke and pyromania. I kind of really know. But, um, you know, it's pick out something you're interested in. And so this is a really good point here is that look how far I'm over my tweet right there. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of way over it. So what I would do is instead of maybe doing that, is I would just reply to her directly and say, sounds, sounds awesome. How are you cooking the chicken? And you can tweet right now. So a fun little fact about Twitter is that, and if this is very basic, I, I apologize, but a retweet is taking someone else's content and putting it in your timeline so anyone following you can see it. A reply, and this is an interesting fact, a lot of people don't know this about Twitter, is that if you reply to someone, so for example, I work at Dell, and a lot of people on Dell follow me. Most of you probably don't follow someone at Dell. And that girl right there, LPT, even if you're following me, since I replied directly back to her, unless you're following her and me, you would not see that content. So you don't have to be worried about like, oh, well, you know, is that gonna, my cigar shop, my person, it doesn't matter. Most likely people aren't overlapping following, so you can reply as much as you want and don't have to worry about being spammy. Also, another thing I love about Twitter is it's very difficult to tweet too much. I know that sounds really crazy, but like Facebook, you can kind of like, because Facebook's not as real time, right? Like you, you can get very spammish easily. Um, but Twitter, I mean, honestly, look, I mean, all these the stuff's been like in just the last, you know, few minutes, right? Um, so you never, you never can do kind of too much. Um, let's see here. I like your shirt better. Okay. Ooh, here's a really, really good point. I'm going to call this guy because he's not here too. Uh, one second. Is that a key when you're, for example, if you wanted to post a tweet about I'm at, I'll just do one. Come up here to compose a tweet. that I can do to really enhance that tweet where it reaches more people or it's more impactful. Anybody can call it out. We're all friends here. Hashtag. Okay. So, great. I'm glad you guys said hashtag. 
So what is a good rule of thumb about how many hashtags you should use? So let me show you what not to do first. I'm going to pick on one of my coworkers here at work here, so I'll show you. Yeah, there he is, old Keith. I hope he watches this video later. Yeah. Okay, look, I mean, hell, I didn't have to go very far. I get the first tweet. Uh, hanging in the river, ranch, tubing, Texas, Knox, which is his last name, and then, because he's James Bond, Keith Knox. I mean, is that necessary? I mean, who may be one of you will find that kind of overkill or Spanish? Okay. Hashtags should be relevant, and you try to incorporate them into the tweet as much as you possibly can. And the whole reason people put hashtags is because if I click color contrast, I mean, come on, dude. Like, if you click on that, unfortunately, he's the only guy using that hashtag. Um, God, he's really going to kill me when he sees this. Um, but that's why people have hashtags. It's easy to track. So, for example, hopefully everyone knows the hashtag for IPCPR, right? Everybody know what it is? Okay. So, IPCPR, 2012. And I bet you a lot of people actually use 13. So, sometimes you have to do, some people don't put the two in the one there in front of it. But that's just, the whole point of having a, hey, look at that guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, the whole point of it is to be able to track conversation around a specific event or topic. So if you've got Twitter on your phone, I would definitely recommend looking at this hashtag because all the conversation around the event is going to be there where you can easily engage. So my original point was integrating hashtags into the message. So instead of putting the IPCP seminar, I can do it two ways. I can either put the IPCPR, which is the Twitter account for the IPCPR, um, and then I can put the hashtag right here, IPCP. I can do that, um, or I can do it vice versa, but no more than that. And then, I, of course, I can buffer it, but since this is kind of a real-time thing where I'm actually talking, I would just go ahead and tweet that right now. Now, one big thing to do is that if you're going to talk, I mean, you carry, I don't know, you know, let's say the CYB, you're going to want to look at, okay, what is the Hoya Twitter account? And until you become familiar with which accounts go to what, you're going to have to kind of look it up. So, you know, obviously this is Joy of Cigars. Everyone knows Jose Blanco. And here's Jose. question earlier about managing your followers and yep. how to uh, oh, yeah. delete them. Yeah, I just want to smoke really bad and cut everyone off. Let me assure you how to do that. Um, okay, so there's a really good tool called Manage Flitter. It's M-A-N-A-G-E-F-L-I-T-T-E-R. Uh, I've already logged in. Um, and what it does is let you do a couple of cool things. So, for example, if you've been the person who um, you've followed a ton of people and you've got, you know, 300 followers but you're following 2,000, I would definitely recommend, to be honest with you, is let's just flush them, let's get them out, especially if you never talk to them. So there's a very easy way to do it. Okay. There's a very easy way to do it. And a couple of easy ways is that it shows the fake counts. Well, because obviously the goal is you're trying to bring down the number of people that you are following. So the first one is fake following. 
So this is going to show you all of it, which, and the other thing is you kind of have to look at this because it's not an exact science. Obviously, we know Dunkerdome is not fake. Um, and some of these, potentially, so you want to kind of go through this. Also, profile images, you can easily click and say, okay, I've never talked to this person. But the best way to do it is people are not following you back by activity. So you can look and see people who, you know, well, actually this is, yeah, people who haven't tweeted in forever. So I would probably start there. And you can easily click, boom, boom, whoever. Jessica Grimm's not active on Twitter, but she is on Facebook and Instagram. But you can go through and kind of judiciously actually look at this, find which ones you want, click on follow, boom, get them gone, get them gone. Um, and then also you can look for things like, you know, who are the people that are talking too much that you don't want to follow, or the people who don't <laughs> talk very much. Um, so that's a way to kind of bring down your followers, but the best way is once you kind of level set your account, the best thing to do is just when you are following, like, is this someone in here? I just want to make sure. Okay, Mark, something I can't pronounce. I'm dabbling all sorts of media design, tech stuff while working in South Park. Hmm, okay. I don't really know you. Let's check out. He's in Germany. Sans Media. I've never followed him. Not going to follow him. Is that easy? And typically, you'll see the people that don't follow you back like that will typically be the people that, you know, a lot of people what they'll do is they'll follow people and then they'll unfollow them just to try to drive up their followers, which we all know that that's not the right thing to do. We want to drive engagement. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you don't want to follow someone, don't do it. So I would, I would really baseline your account, get rid of the people that, you know, you haven't tweeted with or have any relationship with, you don't know who they are. You know, bring, oh, and you know, a good rule of thumb here is always to bring, try to have, I mean, if you're a snob like me, you try to keep it lower, but you know, and it, if it's a little over, a little under, it doesn't matter, but the goal is to try to keep it as equivalent as you can. Um, and, and it just shows a little bit more effort on your account. Does that answer, does that help? Cool. So, and that's a great point, and I wish the seminar, I wish we had another hour. Um, so when people, and I'm, I'm a firm believer in this, is that, you know, when people in social come out, well, it's kind of the rule, right? Whenever, when somebody's happy, they never tell you, right? They, they never tell you. When they're pissed, they always tell you, right? And I think, I personally truly believe is that the worst thing you can possibly do is do nothing, right? I, I truly believe that, because that's where, you know, do you have a specific example of when this has happened, or is this just... A theoretical question. No, I, I, uh, I and some guys like, yeah, I hope there's some hot girls there, with, you know, this kind of thing. And it just uh, responsive, responsive, really inappropriate things. Was it like mentioning you, or was he just tweeting directly at you? It was all regarding my business, like, uh, like my, my store retail shop. Was it Twitter? Facebook. Facebook, okay. Um, so one thing you can do in Facebook is report inappropriate content, and the same thing you can do the same thing in Twitter here, where, for example, I'm not doing this to your tweet, so wherever you are, I'm not. But you can always, you know, either block the person, or you can report them. And if you get enough that you can do it, you know, sometimes, honestly, you're gonna have it's gonna have to be pretty bad for Facebook or them to suspend an account. Did you actually respond to him, or did you just kind of let sleeping dogs lie? see anything, 
and people, I mean, honestly, you're going to run into people that are just, frankly, jackasses like that. And the best thing you can do is respond, be professional. Don't, worst thing you can do is get upset. You know what I mean? Be, just talk to them like that. You know, potentially send him a direct message and say, hey, man, just, just curious, like, you know, you know, let's, let's, you know, let's calm down. What are we doing here? And, and see where it goes. At that point, you just might have to just cut bait and call it good. So some of us with different types of businesses have multiple Twitter accounts where the audiences don't cross, where they have nothing to do with each other, or maybe multiple languages. Okay. How do you manage those multiple accounts with maybe one email account or uh, okay. without having to use something like Tweetcaster or one of yeah. those things? So is this on Twitter or Facebook? Or Twitter. Twitter. No, I mean, why would the lines of business never cross? Are they all somewhat related? I mean, it's a no, they, they could be completely different audiences or different languages. Okay. So... On Twitter, yes. If, if language is something that you kind of, you almost have to have, you know, a separate account. I mean, rule of thumb is that, you know, with your accounts, you want to set up something that is, you don't want I mean, this might not relate to you guys, but set up one for just like a product. You want to keep it kind of at a brand level. But yeah, if you want to do one for different geos and stuff, for languages, that's totally fine. Facebook, what I'd recommend if you have a page, is just have one page and then use the targeting features to then, you can put content in and just let, for example, people in North American English can see something, and that way you can keep it all on one page. It's just much easier to manage. So, so you're saying for you, following a customer might not be the best. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's the whole point is you should, I think you should follow your customers. Like, um, you know, and you don't, I mean, to be frank, if you have a customer that you, is inappropriate and talks about things you don't want to, you don't have to follow that customer. I mean, social is not a, a mandatory thing on that. But yeah, I mean, you, the idea would be you would want to follow them so you were seeing what they were saying. So then at that point in the maybe the week that they were not visiting their shop and they said, oh yeah, you know, I'm outside barbecuing, you can do exactly what I just did and say, hey, sounds great. What kind of cigars are you pairing with that barbecue? Well, I agree with Twitter. It's very easy to video your Twitter thing. Nope. So, yeah, I mean, you can see a, a lot of these. I mean, you can embed, you can do pictures. Like for example, in pictures will be right here. Um, you can do pictures, you can do video, you can do links. And it's always really great to link to content, right? If you're saying, oh yeah, I'm really, I'm reading, you know, or for example, uh, I like to read uh, some social media sites around listening and stuff like that. I'll always link back to it. So people who are reading my tweet then can then go check it out. So that, that's never a bad thing. Can you buffer those things? Yeah. So you want me to send the link? Free marketing, Don. You can thank me later. How do you reduce the size of that link? That's another great question. So let me go ahead and just buffer this. So what you can do is there's, it's called bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y. And what it does, it's a link shortener. And what it does is it takes really long links and combines it down into something very, very, very short. Um, that's like just a little bit, like this one right here, combines it down into something like this. Um, and if you start a Bitly account, you can actually, within Buffer, integrate it. So you can actually track how many times people have clicked the links and you know where they're from and stuff like that. And I've always found that very, very motivating um, because you know you put content out and you're like, man, people really give a shit. You know, people reading what I'm saying. And this is a great way to track, like you know, how many people are actually clicking, you know, on the stuff that I put out. So this one was, for example. Post a picture of Drew Estate. I don't know if Drew Estate's in here, but thank you very much for the retweet. Appreciate it. Um, of a picture that I took, they retweeted my photo. Bam, 59, 59 clicks to my website because of it. So, all right. Um, well, we'll do one more. We got to get.
Jeff? Yeah, so I think, you know, if, if you have kind of an online presence, I think, you know, social can be very helpful. A couple of quick things is that you can grab RSS feeds from your website that can automatically publish if you update a deal or anything like that. I think that's a great way to do it. Two, I would always, if you have a, an online presence, use Google Plus to share that because Google Plus, if anybody, and this is beyond the scope of social a little bit, but with social or search engine optimization is how well your page ranks. If you put a link out in social, that's another link back to your site. Um, and Google Plus is really good because it's aggregated the most often. Um, and the last, I would make sure all of your properties are branded. You know, for example, the logo of your company or your brand is the same on Twitter and Facebook, so you kind of have a unified presence. So when people go out, they're not like, well, is this a real one or is this a fake one or what? So they're, it's a, a unified presence across. So I'm getting kind of the, what do they do, the red light you've been talking too long. So, I mean, I appreciate everyone coming. I want to ask a quick question. How many people, and don't, don't BS me, tell me the truth. Did, did you guys learn, who learned something that was good and valuable? Okay, good. Ooh, okay, that's a, that, that made me feel good. So I appreciate you guys all coming. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the conference. Uh, this will be up. This whole presentation will be up at uh, our Cigar Federation. I'm Logan at Dell on Twitter. Feel free anytime you have a question about social come up now or later. I'm more than willing to talk to you guys about it. Um, and that's it. So have a great show.